Well, hello, my friends. Welcome to me, your host, Christian Watson. So, my friends, I, I, I figured today I would do something radically different. Because I do a lot of Dear X videos, Dear dear Lil Nas X, Dear This, Dear That. But instead of doing a Dear video today, I want to do a question video. You know, Socrates, one of the most profound philosophical voices in the genesis of the development of Western philosophy said that the unexamined life is no life at all. Of course, I am, I'm paraphrasing. But I genuinely believe that questions are the vehicle and questions are the medium by which we examine our life and by which we form conclusions about things in our life and thereby uh, are able to live lives that are lived justly, that are lived in a manner that is consistent with our principles and our values. Um, rather than being consistent with perhaps the principles and values of other people, or rather being consistent with the principles and values of the wrong people. <laughs> so I genuinely believe that questions help us get to a certain place. So I'm going to ask progressives, however, to examine their ideology with five simple questions, just five simple questions, and hopefully if they have any inkling about what they believe, they'll be able to to surmount some kind of defense to their ideology from these questions. But if they don't, as many probably will not have the philosophical fortitude to do, then I'm afraid this may be a practice that reveals the need to examine your life and examine your views further. So here are five questions for progressives. Number one, what in the world is the common good? Progressives talk about the common good all the time. What is the common good? And why should the common good supplant my own individual good? How does one define the common good in light of the various conflicting interests, both general and particular, that human beings have? Is it a matter of balance? If balance is the objective, then could we ever truly, really, obtain the common good? Because the fullness of the common good obviously would not be a matter of balance. It would be a matter of obtaining the common good in its full form. But balance is the refined iteration of the common good against a different quality, against a different value. Okay, let's balance the common good with the individual good. How do you do that without destroying the common good? And if balance is really the objective of making sure the common good is coherent, who decides who, um, what uh, that balance is good? Who decides what balance is what? And doesn't the person who decides what level of balance is good for this goal to be obtained, don't they also have their own conflicting interests? And so how in the world wouldn't that person's interests conflict with the multitude of other interests that are built into this idea of the common good? And if it would, doesn't this mean the common good is a fundamentally unsound idea? That's question one. Question two, does human, does this freedom, excuse me, inherently involve the consent of other individuals or is it inherent to our beings? If freedom requires me, for me to possess a service or a good, like healthcare or a house, is it freedom or is it a privilege? If freedom is prescriptive and not a descriptive quality of my human being, then would it not differ from a privilege? How does it differ from a privilege? Privilege. If freedom is uh, prescriptive, then would it not differ from culture to culture, area to area? If so, is freedom universally consistent? If not, how are you sure that you have the correct definition of freedom? Here's question three. Are services and goods rights? If so, upon what basis do you have the rights to my labor? Because it is convenient, in this case, isn't it? convenient based on circumstances and therefore not universally applicable? Would you be willing to extend the same convenience to people who may be wealthy but don't have a particular good and therefore claim they have a right to your services on that basis? Why not? If not, doesn't this show an internal consistency, inconsistency rather, in your own views? Number four, why is social justice the standard for many of your social views? Isn't justice at least, as the American experiment has conceptualized it, interested in rights rather than positionality on a social scale? In the same vein, is social justice truly justice if it generalizes just outcomes on the basis of arbitrary characteristics which are unintelligible in and of themselves, meaning these characteristics, my skin color, my sexuality, don't say anything meaningful about me, the human being, without being interpreted in a social engine? If it is truly justice... How do people outside of the marginalized hierarchy obtain this social justice? Do they even matter? Why or why not? 
Under the paradigm of social justice, why or why not? If it isn't the typical Western ideal of justice, then why would you want Western institutions to enact, to, to enact it? Question five, billionaires. Billionaires are the typical targets of progressive ire for a reason that I have no clue. Well, actually, I think I do have a clue. I have somewhat of a clue. Because progressives talk a lot about billionaires and their rhetoric. What is wealth? Where does it come from? Is wealth a static quantity that only a few people can possess? If so, what do you call the device you're using to interact with my commentary? Is that a kind of wealth? What do you call anything that you may own? Is that a kind of wealth? What do you call any good that you create, digital or physical? Is that a kind of wealth? What do you call the multitudes of those goods prevalent among the middle class, even the poor, statistically, in society? Is that a kind of wealth? If you say no, why not? If you say yes, then how does this pair with the idea that 1% own 90 plus percent of the wealth in this country if there are wide scale instances of an infinitude of different kinds of wealth? Wouldn't the reality of the situation lead to a rational actor in possession of these facts to conclude that wealth is a dynamic, not static quantity, and perhaps statisticians are either measuring something wrong or you are using the data wrong? Why or why not? Those are my three, my five questions, guys. Hey, if any progressives want to come on the show and debate me about this, I would love to. Um, but until then, my friends, if you want to support my work, please um, donate to me on Patreon, patreon.com slash officialcwatson. That is patreon.com slash officialcwatson. I love all of you, and as always, my friends, please stay pensive. Bye-bye.